A much anticipated announcement was made a short time ago at Ontario's provincial legislature. Premier Doug Ford says the province is moving forward with a vaccine certificate. It will help Ontarians over the age of 12 to prove they are fully vaccinated. And as in some other provinces, that will be necessary to access non-essential services like restaurants. Here's what Ford had to say about the changes. Vaccinations will be mandatory for certain indoor settings where the risk of transmission is highest because of masks aren't always worn, including restaurants, bars, and casinos, among others. Enforcement will be led by bylaw officers, will be reasonable, and will rely on individuals and businesses to do the right thing. The policy will not apply to outdoor spaces, where we know the risk of spreading COVID is low, except for nightclubs because of the higher risk of these settings. We will accommodate legitimate medical exemptions and will be closely aligned with other provinces that have introduced similar policies while ensuring we design and implement a policy that makes sense for Ontario. These measures will be in place as of September 22nd and they're intended with one goal in mind, to allow Ontario to keep moving forward safely. For more on this, let's bring in the CBC's Linda Ward. She's live in Toronto. So Linda, tell us more about the vaccine passport plan. How's it gonna work? Well, Andrew, this is going to work as really a two-step plan. Initially, uh, starting September 22nd, to enter a any number of businesses on a list of businesses the government has deemed non-essential and high risk. You'll have to show your vaccine receipt along with some ID. That vaccine receipt can be downloaded from the province's vaccine portal. The businesses affected by this, you heard the Premier talk in there, just about a few of them, uh, gyms, sports facilities, in indoor restaurants and bars, nightclubs, both indoor and outdoor spaces at nightclubs, movie theaters, meeting and event spaces, concerts and other large gatherings. It does not include retail settings, no retail stores, no malls included here, no patios, barbershops and salons are not included as part of this, neither are religious gatherings, youth recreational sport. They're not deemed to be high risk by the chief medical officer of health, but as they say, that can change. So the second step of this process comes on October 22nd, and that's when the province is aiming to issue uh, enhanced vaccine certificate. So these would be like your vaccine receipt, but it would have a QR code on it that you could then uh, download onto your uh, Apple wallet or whatever you like on your phone and take it to a business which would have an app. Uh, that's still in development, they would scan that QR code. It would tell them that you are indeed uh, vaccinated. That code could be used in other jurisdictions that recognize a QR code system for verifying uh, vaccine status. And those without a smartphone, uh, they can print that out and take it to the business. Now, some of the exemptions uh, the Premier mentioned, their medical exemptions, of course, and of course, for those who are not yet eligible, those uh, under the age of 12, and this, uh, they say, will not restrict access to things like groceries, medical care. You'll still be able to go to the polls and vote uh, in the, the federal election. You'll still be able to go to the bank. Uh, but there will be fines for those businesses that do not comply uh, with these new regulations. Under the Reopening Ontario Act, those fines can start at $750 for an individual who does not comply, $1,000 for a business that goes up from there, Andrew. Andrew. Premier Doug Ford previously said Ontario wouldn't bring in a vaccine passport for, uh, you know, not to travel abroad, but for, you know, within the province. What changed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely a bit of an about face there, but one the Premier says was necessary. He says it's no secret. This isn't something that he uh, didn't want to do. He said that he, in the past, uh, didn't want to create a split society, but uh, today saying it was necessary in order to keep cases down, get vaccination numbers up, and keep businesses and schools open. He called the Delta variant the greatest enemy yet and said after finding out the federal government wasn't going to put in place a national passport, uh, in, instead going with a, quote, unnecessary election, he called it. He had to take the advice of the chief medical officer of health and step up. Here's what he said today. National system is far better than a patchwork of certificates across every single province and territory in, in the country, especially as more Canadians travel abroad. 
but Justin Trudeau has told us that they will not be rolling out a national vaccine passport while their election is ongoing. We can't wait any longer. There has been opposition to this today too, Andrew, the opposition NDP saying that this is too late, that it's a half measure, that it leaves businesses to make some tough decisions. And speaking of opposition, while the Premier was having that news conference, there was actually quite a large protest happening outside of Queen's Park here that's now moving through the streets of Toronto. But part of that news conference, the Chief Medical Officer of Health calling on people to stay kind and compassionate throughout this, the Premier urging those who are opposed not to take it out on businesses, but take it to Queen's Park instead. And it seems some did that today, Andrew. All right, Linda, thank you. The CBC's Linda Ward joining us live from Toronto.